started having nightmares that were horribly vivid and very terrifying, and it only took just a very short time to realize that those nightmares weren't just nightmares, but they were the memories of my childhood. You wake up and you're just, you're in tears and you're sweating and it's like, I remember, I remember that day and I can take you to that room and I can tell you what she said and I can tell you that it lasted this long. It was, it was real. A lot of the abuse happened at night. Grandma would troll into bed with you and start to whisper in your ear and all of a sudden, you know, you would feel her hand going down your back and I was fondled, I was sodomized multiple times, I was smacked, I was whipped with a belt. She took a big wooden spoon and, and broke it over the top of my head. The wake of destruction, I would say, was very wide and very deep. One of the effects of the abuse is a condition where you don't have control of your bowels. And that started not too long after the abuse started. You know, you didn't go places because you never knew when you were going to have an accident. You didn't, you didn't do a lot of things. It devastated being a normal person. I played baseball until I was probably 10, maybe 11. You know, I had an accident in a game once, and I quit. It was so bad, Dad just pulled me off the field and took me home. It's hard, because you're lonely. You're really lonely, and there's nothing you can do about it. You're by yourself. There was nobody coming to rescue me, and, you know, you go to church and you hear, you know, he's there to save you, he's there to heal the brokenhearted, he is your rescuer. That's all I had. Talks about Jesus being with the little children. And you know, you see in your kid's Bible the little picture and he's got all the kids around him. I wanted to be one of those kids. I wanted to be the one that was you know, gonna sit on his knee and have his arm around you and be be safe. As I got older, I just, I kept believing all the lies the enemy was telling me. You know, like, well, you're damaged, you're no good. You know, nobody's gonna wanna be around anybody like you. It was devastating. You just want the pain to stop and... I was gonna take a gun out of my, you know, one of the guns I bird hunted with. Come out of here and be done. But then God spoke to my heart and told me it was going to be okay. We had a, a creek behind our house that was maybe a mile away and we'd go down there and fish. And I went a lot by myself and, you know, I could talk to God there and there, I could talk out loud. There's nobody there but me. I could be honest with God, just like David was in the Psalms when he cried out and said, you know, this is bad. You know, my enemy's about to get me. I felt like that and it was just a conversation I could have and to see the beauty he's created and, and just be away from everything so that that noise in your head goes away and you can just be still and just be calmed by God in that moment when there's nothing else around. A few years ago, as the nightmares started, I knew something was broken. I knew something was wrong. I knew bad stuff had happened, but I just couldn't come to grips with it. And as the nightmares increased, I, I couldn't, I couldn't not deal with it. It was affecting my relationship with my wife. It affected my relationship with my kids. 
So things were, were really tough for many years. Um, it was just he was so resistant to things and again, not knowing for many years what was causing it. I think I told my wife when I was 42. You feel a little bit helpless because you can't. You cannot undo what's been done to them. But uh, I knew we could, I, I don't know, necessarily want to say fight it, but we could work through it together. If you keep something in the dark, it has control over you, and, and I think that the enemy can constantly use that to accuse you. And I had to just get to the point I laid it down and just said, you know what, I can't do this anymore. And then God started really working on my heart, and I started going to counseling and really trying to dig out and all the mess. And, you know, it was a slow process, but it built on itself until you were taking, instead of a little step, you were taking big jumps. For me, forgiveness for a while was really hard. I was a prisoner. I was a prisoner to my own anger and my own frustration about what had happened because I wasn't willing to let it go. I had to pray and just ask God to take it from me. You know, I can't, I can't work this out on my own. I needed Him to work it out for me and Him to change my heart about it. The cross was for everybody. It wasn't just for some of us, it was for everybody. And for me to hold unforgiveness in my heart, it doesn't match up with what Christ did for us. We are having a gathering of some of my close friends, my brother, so that we can eat, fellowship, sit around a campfire, talk, and so that I can share my testimony with them. I'm anxious about it. I know these guys love and care for me. But it's still something that's really personal. I mean, I've not shared it with hardly anybody, and I'm almost 47. It's just a hard conversation to have. I got him a little warm. Come on, guys. So I appreciate everybody coming. So, oh, this is harder than I thought. So when I was about five, um, my paternal grandmother started to uh, physically and sexually abuse me, which she did for about seven or eight years. Um, the abuse, some of it was really violent, some of it was just really degrading. I've, I probably hid it fairly well from a lot of people for a long time, and it made it hard to, to build friendships you know, I'm sitting here with guys that love me. When I was a teenager, I didn't think that would be possible. Let's get, let's get around this dude. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, seriously. Lord, I thank you for your love and your grace, and I thank you that it penetrates all evil. I pray, Lord, that, that your mercy will cover Corey's life in ways that will be felt through his family for generations to come. We thank you for Jesus and for the cross that covers all of our mistakes and all of our sin. I thank you for my brother, and I pray your blessing upon his life. have seen our lives lifted up out of the pit. He lifted us up out of the muck and the mire and brought us to a beautiful place. He's now free. God does come to heal and he comes to mend the brokenhearted and probably six months ago, I just, it all started to click. I really discovered my worth in Christ. It's like, not only do I get to go to heaven, I get to sit at the table at his right hand side. I've never felt that before. I didn't feel like I was worthy enough to go sit with him, it's, it's, I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's just, it's grace. <laughs>